Welcome to another On the Water Northeast Offshore Report. I'm Jimmy Fee. Anthony DiCicci. And we are down here uh, a long way from the Northeast Offshore Grounds in Orlando, Florida at this year's ICAST. That's the International Convention of Allied Sport Fishing Trades. And that's where we get to look at a lot of the new uh, tackle and lures and all the, you know, some boats, kayaks, things like that. All the new stuff coming to the fishing scene over the next six months. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool experience unless your phone keeps ringing with uh, Yeah, live phone. report. <laughs> there are no pelagics being caught in Orlando right now. But I feel like nobody ever, I, I'm never getting more fishing reports like that I could I put to use than, than when I'm down here. Like this week while we're in Orlando, like I, I feel like I, I never have my finger to the offshore pulse in the Northeast better than like the days that I can't possibly put it to use. But the fishing has been excellent. And, that, and that's true just like last week from pretty much Cape May all the way on up to Cape Cod. But starting with the south, uh, you know, southern New Jersey, Cape May, we actually talked to Bass Pro Adrian Avina. I was at the Grundens booth talking to him about uh, one of his other passions, which is tuna fishing. And he was also, he was kind of feeling the same pain we're feeling. Bummed out he was missing a big time tuna bite that was happening off Cape May. So I guess if you go back maybe a week ago, a little bit more than a week ago, they had some good bluefin tuna within 10 miles of Cape May, which is really close for down there for South Jersey. Right now, the water warmed up, those bluefin moved on, and some yellowfin tuna moved into pretty much what you'd call the midshore structures down there. So like Massey's Canyon, 40 to 50 mile runs, and guys are getting them on the troll, they're getting them on jigs, and another tactic that's pretty popular in New Jersey that hasn't quite crept up, uh, I'd say further north than that yet, is they will cast that peanut bunker, take them offshore, and catch, uh, catch cool. those yellowfin on, on live peanut bunker and live spot. That's just, awesome. Just to put a live bait oh, down there on the tuna grounds. So moving on up, it seems like the yellowfin fishing on the northern half of New Jersey, that midshore bite, cooled off a little bit this week, so you're not hearing about as much of that. Talking to guys at Tack Waterman at Fisherman Supply, there are still some yellowfin being caught, but it's been more about the 50-inch bluefin tuna that have been hanging in that same kind of midshore range. So while you have plenty of yellowfin down off the southern half, this off really the southern tip of yeah. New Jersey, you're seeing more bluefin there. Now they are still getting some yellowfin on the midshore grounds, and some giant tuna were caught there this week. Besides that little section of New Jersey, once you get back to Long Island, that midshore yellowfin bite seems like it's hot all the way off on up to New England. It's kind of slid north a little bit on the inshore bite. Dude, it's been fantastic. Last year was a tremendous yellowfin tuna year. Some of the best guys can remember. And this year it's getting off to an earlier start. I was talking to Anthony at Whitewater Outfitters on the eastern end of Long Island. And he said there's good yellowfin fishing pretty much from Coimbra, which is a wreck off Long Island, all the way up to the dump south of Martha's Vineyard. So you're seeing yellowfin inside of the canyons, and that's been excellent. But Anthony's going to talk to us a little bit about what's happening in those uh, eastern canyons. Starting out really at beach, has been an amazing billfish bite from white marlin on up to a really strong blue marlin bite, which is awesome. And actually, my first ever blue marlin happened uh, right in my own backyard. I've chased that dream all over the world pretty much from costa rica to yeah you tried to get one in hawaii on your honeymoon and that, i know it got your marriage off on a rocky start it's still rocky it's, <laughs> it's still very rocky but um it's intact but I, I struck out in costa rica struck out in kona and uh, i fished on hackshaw's boats down in um antigua and that was supposed to be kind of the guarantee and then i come home and July 2015, go out to um, was West Atlantis, and we were trolling, basically a tune spread. But we had a Joe shoot, three ounce, all the way back, candy apple red. I'll never forget it. Big horse ballyhoo on it. We got bit. It was dumping line. It was an 80, and I think the coolest part of catching my first blue marlin in my own backyard was it wasn't on a big charter boat with a 130 in a chair. It was on a stand-up 80 in the Northeast Canyons, West Atlantis, uh, about 5 p.m. And it was, a, it was a chunky, like 300 to 400 pound blue marlin that we got to the boat. And it was just one of those moments that are forever ingrained in my memory. And that bite seems to be really happening right now. Yeah, I was talking to Max Despoto, who works with Shimano. He is another Northeast guy, big offshore fisherman. And uh, we, another guy that I'm down here commiserating with about not being <laughs> able to. There's a lot of that going there, on this there, week. That's, that's been most of it, is yeah. commiserating about missing the tuna bites. We've even had uh, talked to some Southern California fishermen who are bummed they're missing the tuna fishing in their grounds. Yeah. You know, on their grounds. But anyhow, Max was saying a friend of his was, uh, was texting him. They're fishing the Oak Bluffs Blue Water Classic, which is going on this week. That began on July 11th. It's going to wrap up this weekend. And uh, his friend had gone three for three on Blue Marlin, which are numbers that I don't know 
know a ton about Blue Marlin and the canyons. I guess if you dial in on them, they're there, you know? So, I, but they're always big. What it really comes down to is, is, is being dedicated to go out there and, and put a marlin spread out and stay committed to it. Because typically what happens is you raise a blue marlin with a, blue, with, with a tuna spread and it's kind of like a mad scramble and you know, maybe it, it sees something it wants to eat. But from what I've been hearing that if you go out there and dedicate a spread to marlin, you will get bites. And typically on the blue marlin side of things, it's a little upper echelon of quality of fish that we see in the Northeast Canyons. They're bigger. I've only seen two in the Northeast Canyons and uh, one of them ate the yellowfin we were reeling in and we had no shot at it. But it was a really, I, I wouldn't trade that experience for yeah, anything. It was exactly. really cool. Uh, but anyhow, getting back to the fishing report. Besides those billfish, the blue marlin and the white marlin, there's been a tremendous big eye tuna bite. They're showing up in Beach Canyon, as well as the dip of Anthony Whitewater Outfitter said there has been some good blue, uh, excuse me, good big eye moving into the dip. And I heard some of those have been big. So my friend Nakaney, who's been fishing the OBBC, just texted me, said they've gotten a couple stud big eye, 200 plus pounders. So man, it's, it's all happened in the canyons. And if you don't have canyon range, you've got the yellow fin and the blue fin in closer. So there's been some good jig fishing, some good popping. If you uh, can run around and find some schools on top, that yellow fin bite that seems to be mainly a troll bite. And that's true south of the vineyard. That's true off the east end of Long Island. Anthony from Whitewater Outfitter said, if you can find them a little bit further west off Long Island, that's more of a popping bite but it's been trolling and you can tell it's been trolling because guys who say they would never troll are actually trolling like our good friend Joe Diorio. <laughs> I see him posting some uh, some trolling gear on his boat. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are buying uh, spreader bars and daisy chains uh, for the first time because it's been the only way to get bit. There's a lot of yellowfin inshore. Um, so hopefully that's there for us to get back. Hopefully something changes with the bait or something and there is a, a jig and pop bite, which would be amazing. The bite's constantly evolving. Yep. New, new bait moves in, new whales move in, they concentrate the bait and then all of a sudden what's been a spread out troll bait becomes a concentrated jig or, or top water bite. Yep. So you never know what's going to happen. South of the there. vineyard, the yep. dump area has still been hot with a mix of bluefin and yellowfin. And, but, and one segment we want to introduce yeah. this week that we're going to try to do, offshore fishermen love to write their long reports yep. and put them out on Facebook. And uh, man, Th guys, This is but, one that caught my my this is the one we're going to read one each week. Yep. Here's the one we're reading this week. Go, go ahead, take it so away. So on uh, on the group New England Bluefin Tuna, Tyler Bates says on seven eight lines in at northwest corner of the dump at five fifty. Trolled northeast corner and saw one humpback halfway through. Turned southwest from there and still nada. Call came over the radio at nine fifty for a May Day. Collision of a 54 foot wood boat hitting a fellow tuna fisherman's boat at 30 knots on the northeast corner. 20 foot section reported to be taken from the starboard side of the 54. Other boats reportedly stationary, landing a fish and was run up on. May or may not have sunk. Anyways, zero for zero. But early chatter suggested spotty pickups of yellowfin tuna and bluefin tuna at the dump in Tuna Ridge. I did pull a balloon from the water, so there's that. So awesome report, Tyler Bates. We've all heard about that collision that took place there. Very grateful that everybody was unharmed. The boat was, was salvaged, brought back to, uh, to, to the mainland, and uh, it could have been a very- Could have been much worse. Very dangerous situation. So just be mindful, pay attention to your radar, running in the fog, all that good stuff. Safety first, boys and girls, it's important out there. Every week, this report's brought to you by Sirius XM. This week, actually at ICAST, we had a chance to see Jeff Leach, and he ran us through some of the features of the Sirius XM fish mapping. Uh, we're gonna kick over to that right now. And thank you for tuning in to another On the Water Northeast Offshore Report. I'm Jeff Leach here at the ICAST Show 2023, and I wanna introduce you to our newest feature for fish mapping subscribers. We have a new app we're coming up with, and uh, this will be out by late summer. Uh, and this is exclusively for our fish mapping, Series 6M Marine fish mapping subscribers. So if you're a subscriber to, to fish mapping, you're now gonna get a bonus, which is our fish mapping app. Uh, and if you're not familiar with fish mapping, seriousxm.com forward slash fish mapping. 
we'll get you there and that's how you can learn how to subscribe and sign up. But it's a satellite overlay on your boat's display. Uh, it comes in via the Sirius XM satellites and gives you eight dedicated fish mapping features along with our whole suite of weather services. It's an invaluable service when you're offshore, you don't know what's coming your way, and you also want to find where the hottest areas of potential bite are. So let's walk through the app. All right, so it has all dedicated eight fe features that Sirius XM satellite has that I just mentioned. It's got fishing recommendations, three sea temperature features, it's got two plankton features, sea surface height anomaly, which is your upwellings and your downwellings. It's got weed lines, further offshore weed lines, only the prominent big ones, and then ocean currents. So those are all the features right now that are in the app, uh, and ocean currents is unique. So you can also look, if you had a really epic day on the water, you can take a quick look back by going to the calendar and picking the date from a, a few days ago up to seven days old picking the date and then looking at data for that particular day that you were on the water. So let's go to the New England area. Let's go off of Jersey here. And I'm gonna throw on, these are the fishing recommendations. These are the sea surface temperature fronts. So there's a strong front right out here. I'm gonna show you a strong plankton front. So threes and fours represent strong and very strong fronts. And this is a sea surface height anomaly. So these are your upwellings and your downwellings. So you can see just by overlaying this information exactly what was hot at the time. So again, eight dedicated features, actually nine with the app. You get, uh, you get currents as well. So uh, that's our fish mapping app. Again, it's exclusive to fish mapping subscribers and it'll come out by late summer, 2023.